Oh, what was that? The year is 2008, and our story begins in the city of Chicago where Otis McDonald, no, not that McDonald, yeah, that guy, a 76-year-old African-American resident, lived in a neighborhood plagued by violence and crime with multiple break-ins. Frustrated by the lack of police protection and feeling unsafe in his own home, McDonald decided to take action. He believed that owning a handgun for self-defense was essential, but Chicago's strict gun control laws stood in his way. Enacted in 1982 in an effort to curb gun violence, Chicago had one of the strictest handgun bans in the country. The law prohibited the possession of handguns by almost all residents, even for self-defense purposes. The city of Chicago argued that the restrictive gun laws were necessary to uphold public order and safety. McDonald, also along with several other plaintiffs, challenged the constitutionality of Chicago's handgun ban, arguing that it violated their Second Amendment rights. The Second Amendment to the United States Constitution, adopted in 1791 states, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Over the years, there had been much debate and interpretation of this amendment, particularly regarding the extent of an individual's right to own firearms. McDonald's case made its way through the court system, eventually reaching the Supreme Court. But before we can get to that, we have to look at a past case first. In 2008, the Supreme Court affirmed in District of Columbia v. Heller that the Second Amendment protects an individual's right to possess firearms for self-defense within their homes. However, this decision only applied to federal territories like Washington, D.C. So, in McDonald's case, the central question before the justices was whether the Second Amendment applied to state and local governments, as well as the federal government. This concept is called selective incorporation, which is defined by the case-by-case -case approach of deciding which portions of the Bill of Rights apply to states. The case presented a significant opportunity for the court to clarify the scope of gun rights in America. On June 28, 2010, the Supreme Court issued its decision in McDonald v. Chicago. In a 5-4 ruling, the court held that the Second Amendment does indeed apply to state and local governments through the Due Process Clause of the 14th Amendment. Hey, what does that mean? Well, since you so kindly asked, the 14th Amendment writes, No state shall make or enforce any law which shall abridge the privileges or immunities of citizens of the United States. Within the 14th Amendment, the Due Process Clause states, nor shall any state deprive any person of life, liberty, or property without due process of law, and an extreme emphasis on liberty. The majority opinion, authored by Justice Samuel Alito, emphasized the fundamental nature of the right to self-defense and the historical significance of the Second Amendment. It recognized that the right to keep and bear arms is essential to the individual's ability to protect themselves and their families from harm. However, the court's decision was not without dissent. Justice Stephen Breyer, joined by Ginsburg, Stevens, and Sotomayor, argued that the majority had misinterpreted the historical context of the Second Amendment and the intentions of the framers of the Constitution. Okay. If you survived all that yapping, let me give you a whole rundown, a whole overview about this case and those things that go pew pew. First, the original intent of the Second Amendment was for civilians, you know, the normal people, to own guns to form a militia. However, the 2008 Supreme Court case, the District of Columbia v. Heller, shows that the Second Amendment also applies to self-defense within the home. But this only applied to the District of Columbia, a federal territory, and did not apply to any states. Enter in Otis McDonald, who wanted this law to apply to states so he can own a gun. The Supreme Court ruled that the Second Amendment does apply to states through selective incorporation because it was supported by the 14th Amendment. 
Those who dissented or disagreed said that owning a personal firearm was not a liberty or fundamental right protected by the 14th Amendment. In the aftermath of the McDonald decision, cities and states across the country were forced to reevaluate their gun control laws. Many jurisdictions, including Chicago, were compelled to amend and repeal their strict handgun bans to comply with the Supreme Court's rulings. The decision sparked ongoing debates about gun rights, public safety, and the proper balance between individual liberties and government regulation. However, it is important to note that the lower courts have upheld that bans on certain guns is still constitutional as well as additional restrictions on how people can both get and carry guns.